Hey there. Welcome to our video, Wiring Your Off-Grid Solar System. We've split it into two parts to keep things simple. Part 1 will cover everything except solar wiring. Don't worry, we'll guide you step by step. In Part 2, we'll dive into PV wiring and show you how to connect solar panels like a pro. Hit like and subscribe so you won't miss Part 2. Let's get started. Though you can see a power inverter in the diagram, you can use this wiring diagram with any off-grid inverter. Check out these well-known inverter brands. Compatible with the wiring diagram, minor adjustments may be required in some situations, but nothing major. Okay, so let's check the wiring diagram and understand why each component is required. The ACSPD is the first component, for safety and to protect against tower surges. It's essential to install surge protection devices as PDs in the system. This helps ensure the system operates safely and has measures in place to handle any potential power surges. When selecting the SPD get a closer value to your grid voltage. For grounding, use high-quality copper accessories and grounding products. Other component is the 2-pole 40-amp isolator. AC isolator allows for the safe disconnection of a circuit or equipment from the power source, cutting off the electrical flow. This is crucial during maintenance, repair, or inspection work to ensure the safety of personnel and prevent electrical hazards. From the isolator the power goes next to the RCCB. The residual current circuit breaker, RCCB, is a vital safety device for electrical circuits. It automatically detects faults or excessive current and disconnects the circuit when needed. It provides protection against electrical shock and fire hazards caused by or faults. This component isn't seen in many wiring diagrams, but it is essential if your agreed voltage isn't stable as it is one of the main causes that could damage the inverter, as it's not a common device. Sharing more information about it is valuable. Main features of the voltage protector, over voltage and under voltage protection. This protector instantly cuts off power during over voltage, under voltage or over current situations, safeguarding electrical equipment from damage. It also automatically restores power once the voltage returns to normal. This protector has a low power consumption and a long mechanical life, ensuring efficient and reliable performance for years to come. After passing the SPD, isolator, or CCB, and the power protector, the power feeds into the inverter. Next, we will wire the batteries, make sure the inverter, AC isolator, and the RCCB is powered off while connecting the batteries. Between the inverter and the batteries, we use a non-polarized DC breaker. When we install polarized DC breakers in between the battery and the inverter, we consider the battery as the source and set the polarity accordingly. But when the battery is charging, the direction of the current flow is reversed and the breaker becomes reversely polarized. The ideal solution would be using a non-polarized DC breaker. Having a fuse will protect your system Deader than anything else around. Using a NL fuse or a mega fuse is recommended between the battery and the inverter. Calculating fuse capacity. Inverter's continuous power rating divided by lowest voltage your battery bank can then divide by inverter efficiency percentage. Now that we have connected the non-polarized DC breaker and the fuse, it's time to connect the batteries. Wait. Before connecting the batteries you need to charge the capacitors using a resistance load, also called as a load resistor. When power is connected without pre-charging the capacitors, it can lead to a significant spark and potentially damage the inverter. Due to high current absorption, using a lithium or LIFEPO for battery pack in such cases can trigger the BMS to disconnect the load for protection. Moreover, the spark from the rush current could also pose a risk to the technician connecting the wires. Therefore, it is crucial to pre-charge capacitors before directly connecting the batteries. For further technical details, refer to the information displayed on the screen. 
Here's how load resistor looks like. These images were taken from AliExpress. Also, if you need to find the value of the resistor, just check on Google. Charging the capacitors in an inverter is crucial. Although it's not a daily task for this important process, we have an efficient alternative method readily available in the local market. If your inverter is 48 volts DC, you can use a 230 volts AC bulb, 60 watts to 100 watts. Make sure it is a filament bulb, not a LED bulb. If your inverter runs on 24 volts DC, you can make use of a 24 volts headlight easily obtainable at motor spare part shops. So, after pre-charging the capacitors, you are ready to connect the battery to the inverter. Now we have successfully completed connecting the grid and the batteries to the inverter. As shown in the diagram, next we have to wire the inverter output. The inverter output features a tip hole, 40 amper, AC isolator, designed to disconnect the output as needed. From the isolator, the power flows to the changeover. The changeover is an interesting component. Let's explore it further. A changeover switch is essential for off-grid solar systems because allows bypassing the inverter for higher power demands, enables quick switching to grid power in case of inverter faults, enhances system flexibility by offering manual control. The best recommended option for off-grid solar systems is a manual changeover switch like the one shown on the display under the manual changeover section. Next, in the diagram, we have the kilowatt hour meter. It is not an essential item for the inverter wiring, however. Having a watt hour meter will keep you updated about your energy usage. The watt hour meter comes in handy, especially when you want to impress your family. You can proudly showcase the number of units saved thanks to the <laughs> DIY off-grid solar project. Imagine the cost. If you had to pay the electricity provider, my off-grid solar project has saved you all that. Ha <laughs> ha. Wow. Now it's time to connect the wiring to the distribution box or the boxes. Number of distribution boxes totally depend on your house wiring or based on the sections or the number of floors you have. Most of you might already have an isolator and ARCCB in the existing distribution box, and if you do, you can connect the wires to it. But for some reason, if you use the existing ones for the inverter input, then you might need to add those. Finally, we have reached the end of the wiring diagram. As shared at the beginning, a separate video will be created to show the solar panel wiring. This part was extracted from the current video for two reasons. Reason 1. A user might need to add an off-grid inverter just to use as a backup system, while using the grid power as the charging source. Reason 2. Solar wiring makes the diagram look complicated, and there are a few key things we need to discuss. While installing panels and laying wires, subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon to get updated with our next video. Link to the wiring diagram is shared in the description. You can also view the video any number of times until you get the total idea of why each component is required. Still, if you have questions, please feel free to post your question in the comment section. Thank you for watching. Stay powered.